China being here. Now, I realize this may be just sensational headlines. Maybe it's a new focus of the Trump administration. Maybe it's always been there and I wasn't paying attention. But I feel like every single day I get up and I look at the news and I see a new professor has been arrested and or deported, students and arrested and or deported. How ingrained is China here? Obviously, they're here somewhat. Well, and, you know, China's had an open field in the United States, which is quite ironic since American companies in China face significant restrictions. American students face restrictions. American diplomats are, are highly controlled. There's an enormous amount of surveillance. Americans don't have near the access in China that we've given the Chinese here. Essentially, we let the Chinese do here, the government do here, everything we let all our friends do, the British and the French and the Italians and everybody else. So one of the key elements of this administration strategy has really been something called reciprocity, which is, you know what? Forget about Cold War and everything else. Let's just say this. Why would we let you do stuff that you don't let us do? So why should we allow Chinese students here to be treated better than American students in China? And so the United States has started to crack down really on, on, on un, un, uh, not uncontrolled, but unwatched behaviors here. And so, for example, we've had places where in universities where we find hundreds of professors have not disclosed that they're taking money from China and doing research from, from China. We have um, Chinese students which are directly connected with the Chinese military and the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese government conducting research or being students in the United States doing it in matters that impact on national security. I think these are the kind of practices that 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 shouldn't be tolerated because just the Chinese are taking advantage of us. It's just just that simple. Colonel, one last thing here. Now, what is the smart way to address the American corporations who are ingrained with our enemy? Are we comfortable even saying that? And I'm talking about things like the NBA or Hollywood or something like that. If the NBA... If they're that in bed with China that they won't insult China, if Hollywood has executives on speed dial with China where China's rewriting Hollywood movie scripts with our enemy, doesn't that create a bit of a dicey situation domestically? How should we handle that? Well, this is one area in which what we did during the competition with the Soviet Union is something worth remembering, which is let's not, in our effort to, to push back on this, become the other guy, become the guy that becomes authoritarian, destroys free markets, tells everybody what to do. So the free market is actually a great competitive advantage for us. Let's let's use the market to help drive behavior. So transparency, I think, is, is an important thing. Transparency on what the Chinese are doing, transparency on what these companies are doing, both in dealing with China and the conditions they're facing in China, I think that that will really impact and drive corporate behavior. Uh, I think another thing is, let's ask ourselves, why are not people not doing business here? Why are people going to China to do business? What what are the obstructions that we're making at the, the state, federal, and local level? Don't, don't encourage people to, to do business here. The other is, let's do business with our friends. Chinese love basketball. You know what? A lot of people around the world love basketball. There's lots of places that the NBA could go and develop relationships in countries that actually admire America and want to be more like America, that don't want to destroy America. And I, I think we focused on those kinds of things. I think customers get a vote. Uh, I think shareholders get a vote. Uh, I think uh, um, you know people that work with other companies get a vote. And if they're not telling these companies that you, know, you have to, act, that you should act responsibly. Look, I'm not saying, okay, look, you want to have a basketball camp in China, fine. You don't want to criticize the Chinese, fine. But if you're dealing with a company in China that's engaged with slave labor, that's that's taking people and putting them in a camp and then forcing them to do, to develop products and and, mar- and manufacture products, not be paid, and then using that to sell at a discount to Americans, if you're engaged in that kind of activity, I mean, shame on you. Nobody should buy your products. Nobody should nobody should even you know watch your commercials. I mean. That's the kind of thing I think we need to focus on. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Colonel. Appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Best of luck.